To be able to get the grasp of what's going on here, um, does anyone here speak Arabic? Raise your hand if you speak Arabic, please. Okay, raise your hand if you don't speak Arabic. Okay. That's much better. <laughs> All right, so the, the Arabs, they have this. I'm going to, I want you to know that I'm going to kind of attack the Muslims here today. So if you're not a Muslim, then you feel safe probably, but if you are, I'm going to attack you a little bit. Um, the word Allah uh, in the Arabic language is from the Arabic language. There's a difference of opinion on, amongst the, the etymologists, the linguists, the people of language. So there's a difference of opinion as to whether or not this word, Allah, whether or not it is a word which is derived, or if it's a word that is um, not derived, to put it in simple terms. Is it a word that is derived from other words? Like other words, for example? Or is it a word that is in and of its own, not derived. So if it derived from another word, then it would be kind of like saying uh, the God. See. The God. Because it's al ilah, basically. That looks funny with the two. Al-Ilah. And you know, nobody wants to go around saying Al-Ilah, 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 Al-Ilah. Arabs don't like that kind of stuff. That's part of the, the language is not like that. The Arabs, linguistically speaking, like to make things easier. So instead of saying Al-Ilah, 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 you can imagine over time it becomes what? Allah. It's much easier than Al-Ilah, Al-Ilah, Al-Ilah. Even though you do find some people named Abdul uh, Ilah, uh, you do find that. Abdul Ilah. Abdu'l-Ilah, the slave, the slave of the God, you do find that. Okay, but what I think is more important outside of language is the question, oh, okay, and then when we say God, what does that mean? What is, what is God? What is that? And I'm not looking, you don't have to be a theology major. He's asking you, what do you think? What is God? Is God a proper name or is it a... Uh, is it a kind of proper noun? What is God? I mean, is God a name, a personal name, or is it a proper noun, or how does that work? And what does it mean to you? I told you I'm going to pick on you. And if you're not a Muslim, I'm picking on you now too. What does, what does it mean? What does God mean? The Supreme Being. The Supreme Being. All right, so... This microphone is a being, I'm a being. Is it supreme in that sense? It's the best version of stuff? Or does it mean something else? The best version of everything. Well, there's a problem, though. If it's the best version of everything, then God is the greatest thing. But it's not a thing. So when we say the supreme being, what, it really means something. Even It's something that's beyond what they call beyond as a whole, beyond reasoning. At a certain point, why? Because you have no adjectives to describe it. Because he's not compared to anything. So you go to a certain point where, where, and he's right, you know, generally God is like, the, the, he is the supreme being, but not in the sense that he's better than, he's like the best of all stuffs. Not like that. No, but rather, God is, God, how do you begin to describe something that gives all things description? How do you begin to describe that entity that gives all things meaning? It gives all things description. It gives all things qualification. It gives all things uh, that by which you can describe them. And as a result of that, since it gives all those, gives everything that, it cannot be described itself in a way that is directly received. How do you describe that thing that has no beginning, that has no end? It has no beginning, it has no end. I mean, that is, itself is beyond comprehension. 
Everything has a beginning and everything has an end. How can I myself, a creature which has a beginning and has an end, begin to describe that thing accurately, which has no beginning and has no end? I can't even understand that. Who here, for example, how can you, can you explain to me the concept of time? What is time itself? Because now we're talking about beginning and ending, so we might as well talk about time. What is time? Anyone, anyone here studying philosophy like that? A continuum of what? Who said that? It was too many faces. A continuum, a continuum, a continuum of what? What's continuing? What's going on? The passing of events. Hmm? The passing of events. Passing of events. Passing of events. But how do we know they passed? What's the what's the gauge? One state now is never the same as it was before or after. Right. So we can put it like this, maybe. Um, um, yes. Well, what is this thing? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so can you explain that one more time, please? So when the states, when the states change, that is how we evaluate the time. If the states never change, Okay, so the word you're using the most is the word change. All right, so if we were to look at it, to go from this point to this point, see, I'm, I'm at a uni, I'm at a university, so I figure you guys, you know, you're ready for all this. Kind of, you know, other, other environments are a little less conducive. Um, if, if when you move from this point to this point, that movement, oops, that movement, that movement from here to here, this movement, this change, this change of what? Change of positioning, if you want to call it that. A change of positioning, something was here, and now ends up over here. That movement, that change, how you measure that. But, so let's say you're going to, now you start to measure it. Well, you can start calling these, you can get these names if you want to, to keep track of the movement. Well, you can call it one minute, two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, five minutes. That measurement is called time. That measurement is called time. But where is time? Like, where is it? Does everyone follow that so far? Where is time? I think it's always the present, but yeah. to, to make it easy to talk about, yeah. we invented Sure. So, I mean, all right, in the present, where is the present? It's the only thing yeah. I know. Right. So we're, everything that we know, does so that mean that means that maybe that what we if, if we don't know it is it not present? It's almost like you're using the word present in, in double meaning. That which is present, in front of me, and present, as in now. One word but two different applications. Okay, but anyway, so time, which is interesting, I think is it, it's an invention. What's necessary for time is you have to have movement. You, got, you have to have movement. So that means that there, that if there were no movement, there was no such thing as movement, you would not be able to have time. It's impossible. How would you be able to gauge? So for example, if we were to turn off the electricity and shut down and close the windows and stay here for days on end, eventually we would lose track of time because we have no way of gauging movement. Don't, you can't, for example, you couldn't go outside and say, well, it looks like the sun's over here now, or it's over here now, or it's over here now. That's how you start gauging time. Or you use your watch. <laughs> it's a little easier. Especially if you're going to be using the sun to gauge the time in the UK, you're going to lose time all the time. <laughs> right. But anyway, so, but what, what, what's amazing about God is that God is, the, God is the creator of time, conceptually speaking. You don't have to believe in God or don't believe in God. But conceptually speaking, God is the creator of time because God is the creator of what? Hmm? Yeah, but I mean specifically. Here, look at this. God is the creator of what? What are the main what is the essential component of time? Change. Movement. Someone said movement. Or change. Now if you look around you, is there anything but change? Is there anything that remains the same in the world? 
Everything is constantly moving. So God, in the Abrahamic traditions, is the one who creates change. He's the one who creates time. Therefore, he's before time itself. He's before it altogether, which is, that's not our experience at all. That's just not our experience. I mean, if, if, that's, if that is your experience, then you should probably write a book. It would be very interesting to read about your experience. Our experience is that there's change, and our experience is that there's movement, and it goes without saying that any time there's a movement, there has to be someone who gives that, who makes that movement occur. Isn't that also the case? Any time there's a movement, there has to be something or some, some entity that causes that movement to occur. Otherwise, you couldn't, it doesn't, it's irrational to think of a movement without there being a mover. You wouldn't really do that. If all the world is changing, and all the world is movement, then we have to say at some point, there must have been some, some entity that caused that movement to occur. Well, on a sort of a, I don't know, now we're getting almost Aristotelian about it, but this is, this, this mover is called God. All right, now, at, at least in the English language, that's God. Now, what's different maybe about Allah, what might be different about Allah, is that this is not really exactly a direct translation. It is, but yet it isn't. Because when I say God here, is there, can I, does this work also? Notice the lowercase. Can there be multiple gods? Can there be, can there be multiple movers? This word doesn't cancel out. This word doesn't necessarily cancel out the idea of multiple, of multiple gods. It doesn't necessarily cancel it out. But if you go along with, uh, I mean, the capital G is kind of conducive to that. But I'm talking about conceptually. Now, when it, came, when it comes to this, this, if you want to use the word dispensation, or if you want to use the word revelation, or, or this particular religion, whatever it is you want to use when it comes to Islam, this God, this God describes himself. He begins to describe himself. Why? He begins to describe himself because the human being who, is, who would therefore give him, his, give him the level of respect and the level of admiration and the level of, of uh, obedience and these kinds of things that are due to the one who creates, the one who owns everything. He starts to, to, to describe himself. And one of the, words that, one of the ways he describes himself is al-wahid. Al-wahid, the one. But even before that, he says that he's ahad. Ahad, which is even more one. Right? Do you know what wahid means? Anyone? What's wahid mean? One. OK, what does ahad mean? Huh? Single. The singular. That's a beautiful scary. All right, so he uh, so he is uh, so he is he is wahid. He describes himself as wahid, but he also describes himself as ahad, which is even more interesting. Wahid, wahid is at the level of attributes. The level of attributes, God is one. But when you go up a stage, one more stage into what God actually is Himself, His very essence, you're going up further into a higher level of of, of unity. You have this thing called ahadia. Or the, or the singularity of God, Ahad. So, anyone here read Arabic? Raise your hand if you read Arabic. All right, raise your hand if you read Arabic with comprehension. Uh, okay, I'm not talking about like Quran readers and all that I'm talking about. Anyway, for the sake of, you just want to see my, my, my penmanship or my chalkmanship. Uh, so, Wahid, and then Ahad. Even from the Arabic language, you can see that this is this is yet more simplified. How do you see that it's yet more simplified? Because you're missing a letter. But even so, this is Wahid. He's one. But this is even more simplified. It, he's singular. He's singular. Now, anyway, all these kinds of words they are they indicate this. Allah. It indicates 
This word is an umbrella term which indicates all of the attributes by which he describes himself when it comes to revelation. So the difference between God and Allah is uh, in one way it's very much the same, in another way it's very, it's very much different because through the, through the word God alone, you wouldn't be able to recognize and understand the, the depth of the one who made you. This is where, and so basically it comes down to Arabic. And if any, any, anyone in here is not an Arab, I would suggest that you do learn Arabic. If anything, just to increase your intelligence, honestly. One of my teachers told me is that if anything, just learn the language so you become smarter. Okay, that sounds like a good idea. So, but I'm gonna, as I said, I kind of want to get, I kind of want to pick on the Muslims a little bit. Because that was basically what you call a Sunday school lesson. I think that everybody kind of understands basically anything that we just said is not very difficult to grasp. But now I want to go deeper into it and the difference between God and Allah. It's not just language. I had a friend of mine, I'm a convert to Islam, I had a friend of mine when I, when I converted who um, saw me changing my lifestyle and then they said, you know, hey man, it's cool, you know, God is cool, you know, I'm here, he's there, we're cool. <laughs> right? You know, he's there, I'm, we're cool. And I thought, and I thought to myself, like, man, you know, like, mashallah. <laughs> but yeah, so close yet so far. I want to ask you, what is, what is religion? What is it? What is religion? A way of life. Um, some people, they exercise every single day. And their, exer their exercise, uh, they, they gear their, their life around their exercise. And that becomes their way of life. Is that their religion? Innocence. It's too bad. What else? What, uh, any, other, any other definitions? An organization, what if it's not organized? Yeah. Yeah. An organization like a, a, method. a method, okay. A method by which you can come to? Yeah, to develop a relationship with God. With God. A method by which you can develop a relationship with God. So what if there's no method? All religions get methods? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Some of them like or pride themselves on the fact that there is no method. Like Southern Baptist, like I'm from, I'm from Georgia, right? So you guys know what Georgia is? You guys are like, yeah, we know Georgia, man. <laughs> <laughs> so Southern Baptists, for example, they pride themselves after having no method. They're just like, except Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and we can get on with it. Kind of, the method of, of method dismiss. I guess, kind of hard to follow, but yeah, I guess so. Anyone else? What the other person said before going into it was about um, the evil way of life. Yeah, yeah. Like, um, going back to the point about does there have to be a God? Like, I think if somebody kind of like has a, if they set a certain aim, if their kind of primary aim, whatever that is, and whatever route that they need to get to it, so if it is like you were saying, um, like someone who's really big on health, if it is someone who's doing like a crazy PhD and that's what they spend all their time doing, if your main aim in life is for a particular thing, whatever. Right. So what's really important, just to cut to the chase by what you said, is very important. One thing that we can say about religion across the board, whatever, whatever it is, whatever way you describe it, whether it's secular in nature or not, because if it's about being devoted to something, you know, like you might see texts, the books of like you know, um, the religion of no religion, these kinds of things, and secular religion, that kind of thing. It's all about devotion, being devoted to something, which means that ultimately. From this point, we can say that religion is about having some kind of end and being dedicated to that end, which is very important. Okay, so we can say that perhaps we want to, and I, I kind of want to for the sake of would my that be, Would that be the very first very brief thing you find on the, on, like the Oxford English Dictionary, or you know, just a very small, very brief definition of what religion is? I think, I think we're, we're abbreviating so terribly that it's ridiculous. Yeah. There's a lot of new use games there. Yeah, radically abbreviated. Seems to have its main, I mean, there's wide ranging. Extremely. Yeah. 
extremely wide, extremely vague. Because I, because, and I think the reason why that is is because I think that we are much more religious in nature than we really would like to admit if we just look at the definitions of religion and, and if we look at it as devotional practice, this kind of a thing. But most importantly, um, it's important for us to realize that we, we generally, we, we act with some sort of end in mind. We act with some sort of end in mind. And those people who are more devoted to that end are more devoted, more religious than others. But he's religious about his studies. What does that mean? Like he's not, you know, you're not going to find him here or there. But he's, or she, right there, isn't it? Okay, but so if we can, and it's probably the most, to date, the most abbreviated form of definition of religion that I've come across. So thank you for your help in doing that. I'm going to remember that and probably might see it in some YouTube lecture. Uh, anyway, um, I want to ask you, when it comes to Islam, when it comes to Islam, what is the goal? This is for the Muslims in particular. When it comes to Islam, what is the goal? Jannah. Okay. Jannah, for those of you who may not know, is paradise. All right. Another. What? So that's one. Is everyone everyone agree with that? Yep. Um, oh, was. Submission, okay. Can you see this? Am I writing like, can you see? Cool. This is American English. You're like, no, that's just English. What you say is American English. All right, Jenna, submission, what else? Submission to, I'm sorry, to what? Submission to the supposed greatest leader, if that's that said. To create. Okay, what else? Yeah. <laughs> um, to be able to stand before God and say, I believed in it and I tried. So, like, so to pass a test? Yeah, basically. Test passing. So that it lands in, the, in this ring here, through there. If I was to try to do that, but then I change my, but then I, before I throw it, I start thinking well, maybe I have these other things I could do. Am I going to get my chalk into the into the ring or not? Hmm? No, wait. This is what I'm saying. If I'm not sure that's even what I want to do, can I throw it? Yeah, you're right. I might. There's some, you know. You, 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 what do you do? That's your study. Huh? <laughs> so yeah, I can throw this and then, you know, it might go in there. But in other words, if my goal is more than, you know, if my goal is four or five different things, when I throw the chalk, I don't know. I mean, if it, and if, it, if I make it in there, can I even really claim it? When it was just like a, you know, it was just buckshot and I happened to, oh yeah, one of them got in there. Right, so now notice that we're not talking about the same things here. The, the end is not the same here. That's why he's like, um, wait. He's seeing that the end is not the same here. We're all people who say, La well, not everyone, but a lot of people here say, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. Is that But it doesn't, but it doesn't, uh, these things do not, they don't link up. To, why is that? Look at them, and and and, and look, look at them and tell me if, if you agree with what I'm saying. What is the goal? Then? Notice that I said, "What is the goal?" These are goals. What is the goal? Yeah, living peaceful, good life. Okay. Peaceful life. Okay, again to cut to the chase because we don't have you know forever. What is in common about all these things? An end. Hmm? An end. 
Jong Ho then? Yes. Hey. What? Assumes what? Assumes purpose in the universe. Assumes, right. They, uh, all of them assume, assume that there is a purpose in the universe. Yeah. It all happens in the hereafter? Well, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not, man. That's that pie in the sky religion. Yeah, nobody, nobody likes that stuff. When you talk about gold, you talk about the spirit of the sun, right? Uh, uh, No, I'm asking what is the what is the aim of the what is the aim of the stuff? What is our role? Okay, so the goal is one of three things. Get to heaven, get out of heaven, and ultimately okay. the last one is uh, pleasing Allah, loving Allah the way to love you. Sure. Okay, let me ask you something. Is paradise created, yes or no? Yes. yes. Is submission to the creator a creation? Itself, yes or no? Submission, the act of submission, is it a, is it a, creation, is it a creation or not? Yes. Uh, test passing, is that a creation or not? Okay. Now, God's pleasure is not a creation, but is it God Himself? Is it God Himself? You're saying yes. If God's pleasure is God Himself, then God's wrath is also God himself? So, or is it rather that these are attributes by which you describe God, but he's not these things themselves? But he was, there's multiple gods. Um, so this one will kind of leave sort of a question because it needs more. Peaceful life, is that creation or not? Okay, then what we can say is that what we are saying, basically, with the exclusion of this one which needs something, is that our goal is creation. Is that really what the goal is? Is that the goal? Like that's what I'm spending my whole life for, creation? I'm spending my life, I get up in the morning, you know, you guys know Muslim, do you guys know Muslim, you know, those of you who may not be Muslim, do you know like what we're supposed to do? Oh, it's awesome. We get up in the morning, <laughs> we get up in the morning like, you know, the sun has the, 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 the dawn is broken, we get up in the morning, we put cold water on our face, we put water, cold water on our limbs, we get our hair all wet, right? Some of us more than others because we get freaked out about <laughs> evolution. And then we go over, and sometimes we get in the car and drive to hang out with a bunch of other people who are sleepy and tired. Sometimes we prostrate and put our, put our face on the carpet that needs to be cleaned, for God's sake. Right? Then we can't, like, we can't eat this, we can't eat that, we can't do this, we can't do the other. And we're doing all of that for what? Is that the goal? Okay, so let's try again. Let's try again, because I'm I'll tell you something, I'm a convert to this land, and I decided at some point that creation was not my goal. That was not, that's not my goal. Because one created thing, another created thing, another created thing, another created thing, you put them all into the created box, and it's all the same at the end of the day. There has to be something more valuable to me, yes? Is it a relationship with God? Is it a relationship with God, or is it other than God? It does, but it's not God himself. Does it involve the word good in some way? Good? I think so, yeah. Doesn't it always go back to the creator himself? Well, does it or does it not? Yeah, like, yeah, the, the goal in Islam is God. The goal is God. He didn't create me for anything else but himself. My goal is God. My end is God. If I have any other objective, I have any other end, then it just... Yeah, Say again? The, not, the way you're just saying it just it, it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't have to mean anything to you. The purpose, it's, hmm? the purpose of any, any, our life or in Islam, or you say purpose of Islam, yeah. is God. Mm -hmm. no. So the one the question is, who is the one who puts purpose in all things? Well for a Muslim they would say God. You have to assume that it's first. Hmm? You have to assume that it is first. You have to, assume, oh yeah, you have to, if it's like that, you have to assume you can exist first, which is a whole other conversation. 
but we're taking some certain things as a given. So here we are, we've kind of accepted certain things. Uh, God himself is the goal because he, he puts the value and the purpose behind all goals. And if you have a goal that is other than him himself, then you haven't risen to the occasion because he made, he made you for himself. Now, how do we show this is the case? God himself is the goal. How are we to reach God as goal? What, what do we have? What, what are the constituents? And this is particularly useful, I think, for Western people. What, what, are, what are the constituents that make a human being a human being at the most basic level? What do you think? Oh, wait a second. Consciousness. OK, so by that, you probably mean mind. Yeah. OK. All right, moving on. Then. Is this part, whether you accept or reject, is this part Clear. Cool. All right, so I'm going to go with this one and I'll explain why. All right, mind. So let's, I'm going to give you a hint and say that basically we're composed of three parts. Sorry, um, yeah. one second. Um, are you saying that the purpose of Islam is God, or the purpose of God? No, they don't. Um, they don't so what, what you're saying, basically, is the purpose of Islam is God. No, you're saying the, pur the purpose of religion for me? The purpose of religion for me, why he gave it to me, was to reach him. It's a vehicle. The destination is God himself. Okay, so we have mind. And I'm going to give you a hint and say that we can... As far as this tradition is concerned, we have three parts. So we got one third, the way, one third out of the way. What are the other parts? Body. Okay. Can you still see me here? Body. All right. And what's left? Soul. Soul. Body, mind, and soul. Okay. These are the three parts that we can say that make a, make a nafs, make a person, that make a person, body, mind, and soul. Now, if my goal is God and the himself, and the vehicle that I've been given is this thing called Islam, then where does it start? Where does it start from? It has to start from me somehow. Where is it, where is it going to start? No, it can't start with the soul, man. Mind? Kind of. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, but the starting, when I say starting, what I mean is when do, when does the physicality of it begin? Okay, so that gave it away is the body. Unless your mind is a physical entity. Okay. This is called Islam. Or you can say Sharia. Yeah, I use that word. Now this is Islam. Now think about it. In the Hadith of Gabriel, if you are familiar with the Hadith of Gabriel, in that Hadith of Gabriel, he starts, when, when asking about the nature of religion, he starts with the outward, the body. He starts with Islam, or what is called Sharia. Now the question is, how do I realize God? How do I realize God himself with this part of my person? How do I do it? In other words, how do I become a monotheist when it comes to my limbs? Which sounds funny, because monotheism is about beliefs and that kind of thing. How do your limbs have beliefs or not have beliefs? What needs to occur at this level in order for me to be able to realize my ultimate goal? Yeah. Um, your mind has to receive information from your parents or your geography. As to then your, um, how you came to exist. Sure. When you're starting in a different place, I could say that's not true because first you have to exist. First you have to exist. As a person that has to happen, you have to be. Now, do I exist or do I not exist? That comes back to the first question. So, in this, so there's certain this presuppositions mind, that. Hmm? Something, would have, something would happen with your mind. Something, information will come into your mind. Well, I don't know. But the thing is, you have to be there first, whether you realize it or don't realize it first. Oh, so yeah, so it's human body. I 
for the receiving body. Yeah, I'm not making, I'm, I'm, what I'm trying to say is that we've already made certain assumptions to this point. Yeah. yeah. So this is where we're at right now with the assumptions that we've made, whether they're right or wrong. So body is about body is about Islam. Islam is about the physicality. How do I how do I realize my goal, which is clearly God, with my body? Well, your limbs should be in compliance with what the law dictates. Very simple. Because the law is coming from the one who makes the commands. So if my limbs are in compliance with what I'm supposed to do, then I am realizing my goal, which is God, when it comes to my limbs. How do I understand that better? If they are not in compliance, if they are not doing what they're supposed to do, I'm not realizing, realizing my goal, God himself, because I've chosen a different goal over God. Who's, what goal is that? In some way or another, it's creation. Usually it's going to be my own self. I decided to do what I wanted to do. Thank you very much. Well, you're not, you're not the one who's, the, you, you are not the one who decides what you do with your limbs because you don't own yourself. God owns you. So this is how a person realizes the oneness of God in terms of the body. Now what happens generally is that, and I, and I use this word mind, I didn't, I don't mean it in a, and this might be difficult to take because we are in the UK, and this is Europe, and we are living in the times that we're living in, but there, it doesn't necessarily mean reason or rational. Not necessarily. For example, when I come into this door, or when I come in here, if you guys later. <laughs> so when I come in here, when I come in here, and I take a turn, a turn like this, and I come over here to start where I start off again. If I, if, you know, I just told you everything that I did. But when I come into the room and I see the room and I and I and I, I turn my body and come over here. Am I aware of most of that? Am I aware of how far I'm lifting my legs off the ground? Am I aware of the degree by which I'm turning? Right. But I, what I wanted to show you was that there was a door handle there, or a knob, but that doesn't help. Let's say that there was a, let's make an imaginary room, imaginary situation where there's a knob over there. And I go over there, I put my hand on the knob, and I turn the knob and I come inside. How, how much of my reasoning process did I use to be able to open the door? Probably none. There's no rational process. That's me, if I want to use the word, comporting. I'm comporting to the situation where that my body needs to go into this and I need to turn the doorknob and go inside. I'm not, it's not a rational process. It's not that that way, but you learn as a child that you're not doing clockwise. I don't understand what you said, I'm sorry. You, as you learn as a child that you're not doing clockwise, you, you, you use reason to begin with, then it becomes second nature. Yeah, learning is not necessarily a rational process either. Comporting is probably a better term. So what I'm saying is that it doesn't matter if I learned it or didn't learn it, it becomes second nature, it becomes second nature. There's not a rational process by which I need to decide whether or not. And that's about 99% of my activities are based in me just comporting to a situation, which means that the vast majority of what my mind is used for has nothing to do with rational thought at all. But it's still, it's engaged. I mean, I'm aware. I'm aware. So what we're talking, when I, when I say mind, really I'm talking about awareness. Might be a better way to put it. Awareness. In, a, in, in Islam, in this thing that we have, this is called Iman. Iman. It's the path of awareness. Because here, you know, you got a lot of people, what do you call someone at this level? In the Arabic language, what do you call them? You call Muslim. And this person is called a mu'min. Is there a difference between a Muslim and a mu'min? Yeah, qualitatively speaking, there, there's a difference. What is the difference? They've managed to engage more of themselves in the goal. Here, at this level, awareness. This is where you hear words like taqwa, you know, God fearing, all these different kinds of things. And then finally, moving up one more. So how, um, so how, do, I, how do I realize my goal when it comes to, to awareness? When it comes to iman, how do I realize my goal then? So in other words, if, if, what does awareness mean? Could you not be, I'll just use some sort of American 
vernacular to just break it down, that you not be sleeping when it comes to some thing. Unconscious, you're not asleep. Right? It's in your presence. That's the word that you said before. It's in your presence. Now, what happens is that because the, the body generally, the body is the, the body is the gauge. The body is the gauge of what comes after. When your limbs act a certain way or do a certain thing, it, it, it affects the inward, which affects you want to get, you know, use mystical terms, the inward of the inward. It affects all of it. Finally, a person, so here, when a person is aware of God, their mind is contemplating. And that's not always a rational process either. It's an awareness. Finally, it ends up in this thing, which is the worship of the soul. Um, and this is, this is ultimate presence. Or you can say experience. Presence or experience. That there are things that happen here that cannot be understood, they cannot be articulated from this frame point, and they cannot be demonstrated from here. Something happens in the soul. And basically what that is, the soul, and, if, and again we're presupposing there is a thing called a soul, but the soul is not like the body. The soul is not like the body. It doesn't have the limitations that the body, that the, that the body has. It doesn't have the limitations that the mind has either. Um, does the mind have any limitations? What do you think? Quite a few. I'll give you one. You have a term here in the UK called fresh frozen. When you go to the store and you want to buy like peas, and they're hard as a rock because they're frozen, somehow in America we get off putting the this, uh, this stamp on it, oh yeah, yeah, they're fresh frozen. What does that even mean? Do you have something here called jumbo shrimp? We do. <laughs> we do. We love these, these oxymoronic jumbo shrimp. It's like a really big, small shrimp. <laughs> yeah, jumbo shrimp, I don't know. But anyway, the mind cannot deal with things like that. That's why it's nonsensical. Do you know, do you know what laughter is? Laughter is what happens when something makes no sense. When it goes against the, the, against the reasoning, you go, what? <laughs> what? Right? That's what makes us laugh, because it's, 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 it's absurd. Absurdity is what makes us laugh. And what, what absurdity is, is it basically, uh, if we can, again, be very, very sort of succinct, absurdity is this attempt to try to join between opposites. You can't, you, on a mental plane, you cannot do it, which is one of the reasons why for example, when you look at the, the light waves that are in the room here, if you were to examine them, from last that I know, studies show that the light, the, 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 that light itself is both wave and particle. Wave and particle. I don't know if you know about, but that's impossible. That's jumbo shrimp. <laughs> you can't have wave and particle at the same time. I mean, at least conceptually speaking, it there's no room for that. It makes no sense. Another one is, how am I sitting here talking to you when I'm, I mean, if, we, if you go with this kind of paradigm, I'm soul and body at the same time. That means that I'm material and immaterial happening simultaneously. So where is, that's why you get these questions, where is the soul and does the soul even exist? Because it's hard to even imagine this. It's, but the thing is that you are that. You are that impossibility happening. So the soul doesn't have these limitations. The soul does not have these limitations. It doesn't have the limitations of the mind. It doesn't have the limitations of the body. Because the soul itself comes from a place that is beyond the limits of this world. And that's why he said, And we breathed into Adam from this soul that we own. Meaning it comes from a different realm. The object is now. And this is a highly philosophical question. And I... <clears throat> I'm going to do what I want with it, basically, but um, what are you? What are you yourself? Are you your body? What do you think? You say no. I'm going to challenge you, and I'm going to say yes, you are your body. Argue with me and tell me why you're not, why I'm not my body. I mean, like, 
industry. Make sense? <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, like it's constantly. Okay, so what she's saying is that basically, in order for you, and the def a definition has to be constant. Okay, you're saying that definition must be constant. So in order for me to define what I am, that definition has to be constant. I cannot be my body because my body is constantly changing. Yeah. So what you're saying is, I wasn't born six foot two, yeah. right? So something happened along the way where I became six foot two. But, yeah, but and, and, that, and, the, and so therefore, to be able to say that I am my body is not true because I wasn't born with that body. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. If you was your body, then when your body died. saying, for example, that if, my, if the basis of my understanding is going to be my brain, then I will never know what I am. I will never know what truly is me or just truly not me, because when I die, my brain dies. So therefore, I can never know. Right? That's fine. That's what you call thinking when you don't have revelation. But if you have revelation, you accept certain uh, presuppositions. So that's why, we, again, we keep going back into the, the presupposition of revelation. So, um, you said that we make assumptions to go to this point. Yes. To to this point. Yeah, yeah. One of these assumptions is that you know, I'm born your body. Yeah. If I do not want it, then it's not me. Yeah. It's not me. How yeah. can I be something that I do not want? Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's another way of looking at it. I think we're basically saying that we agree that we are not our body. Most of us here. We are not our body. Okay, cool. Because that's not really what I want. That's not, I'm actually not talking about anything I want to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even there yet at all. Okay, am I, am I, am I my mind? First of all, what is a thought? Don't get out of Wikipedia and do that. <laughs> what is a thought? A process. process. What kind of process? Uh, some of it's known, some of it's known, uh, not known. It's, been, uh, it's just basically chemistry. Chemistry. Chemistry slash. Is it chemistry or is it or does chemistry result from it? Is it chemistry or does chemistry result from it? What what is a thought? Basically, let me just cut to the chase. Nobody knows. We argue about it all day long. I study philosophy, believe me, we have no idea what a thought is. An idea of being they are described as being. Ideas, of, okay, but that doesn't tell me what a thought is. Ideas. What's an idea then? <laughs> yeah. There we go. It takes a while. Because it takes forever because there's no, because then every time he's, every time he starts saying something, someone goes, no, 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 no. <laughs> believe, believe me, I know like, philosophy is, a, it's, 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 it's a terrible addiction. And I, my name's Abdul Aziz. I'm addicted to philosophy. And then, here we go. Okay, anyway, so look. Um, anyway, look, the, my question was, are you your mind? Well, first of all, your mind is basically composed of thoughts. Your thoughts, we don't even know what that is, but we do know that they're constantly doing what? Changing. We already said that you're not your body because your body is constantly changing. So that to be consistent, we have to say that you're not your mind because your mind is constantly changing. And definition has to be that which is constant or based upon that which is constant. I can't be my mind because my mind is never made up. Okay. Great, man. So. I am not my body, and I am not my mind. Again, you're sitting in a room of people who kind of believe in God, so they're going to kind of believe in the soul. And the most important word is the word belief. So you can accept it or you can reject it. But when it comes down to it, the only thing I can be is this. The only thing that, in other words, what I am. Is my, it has to be my soul, and this is the reason why God will ask me, 
Right? He's, what he's going to ask me about? He's going to ask me about what my soul has done, the, the actions of my soul. That's why I'm asking even about my intentions. And I'm asking about, my, about the actions of my limbs. So if I get my body straight, if I rectify my body, I haven't rectified myself along the way. If I rectify my mind, I haven't rectified myself, I'm on my way. But if I've rectified my soul, if my soul has been rectified, then I have done the job I'm supposed to do. And this is called Ihsan. This is called Ihsan. So, in order for me, if this is, if this is, you can accept it or you can reject it, but I think the argument has been pretty consistent all the way through. Is it? thing which is called you know applied Islam basically applied Islam well, one of the um, a text that I love to read a lot is called the Hikam al Ata'iyah it's the Hikam of Ibn Ata'ilah the Skandari it's a very very old kind of medieval it's like this place <laughs> kind of uh, kind of um, wisdoms you can accept them or you can reject them I tend to accept them because they tend to get into the meat the meaning of things and would like wisdoms. If you like it, wisdom, you can accept it. If you don't like it, you don't have to accept it. It's not revelation. You can do whatever you want. But what does he say? He says, "Min alamat li atinadi al amali, nuksun al rajai inda wujud al zalali." Min alamat. I like to like the Arabic sounds cool to me. And Arabs that are in the room or Arabic speaking people are already they're already doing the process. You guys don't think that much of like I noticed that people with people who have like, people who have languages that are very very strong they tend to be very very intelligent people in the beginning because their language is so strong so rich and that doesn't mean that the others are not but just that the ones who have the language can prove it faster. من علامات الاعتماد على العمل نقصون الرجاء عند وجود الزلالي that from the signs of depending upon actions. From the signs, from the indications of you, depending upon your activities, your amal, your body, or even your mind. Because isn't it true that you have, isn't it true that you have outward and inward activities? We already said that. We said the body and mind. We've already done this already. They both have acts. The body has its amal, its acts. Which is, we'll just leave it at acts because that's just easier than saying something else. And then thoughts. But they're both activities. We said before, when we started, we began and said that our goal is not the creation. This is creation, and this is creation. He said, Min alamat al itimadi al amani, from the signs of your depending upon acts, or for the sake of our conversation, from the signs of your depending. Because in the beginning, we didn't, when it came to the religion of def, uh, the definition of religion, we didn't really use the word dependence. And that's a major, major part about the, the, the nature of devotion. Whatever you're devoted to, you depend on it. And that's something that Westerners really don't like that word. We like to think that we can do it ourselves. Right? We, 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 we don't mind depending on ourselves. That's not a problem. I can do it. It doesn't fall into polytheism. But if we say depending on something else, then we start throwing our hands up. 
So anyway, من علامات الاعتماد على الأمني from the signs of depending upon one's activities نقصان الرجاء عند وجود الزلل is that a person begins to lose hope. A person begins to lose hope. Their iman, their faith, they lose hope when when they have a slip, when something goes wrong. From the signs of your and my depending upon our activities, depending upon creation, the creation that we are involved here, are either it be our limbs or whether it be our thoughts, is that when we have a slip, when something goes wrong, when we fall into disobedience or forgetfulness or whatever the case may be, we lose hope. And I think this is an extremely deep wisdom. Tell me why. Why do we lose hope? Tell me. Why do we lose? Why do we lose hope when something goes wrong on our end? It shakes our belief in us doing things independently. Yeah, that's, a, that's the, the crux of the matter. But maybe, but before we get there, yes. Makes you feel like you're losing control. Makes you feel like you're losing control. Ain't that the truth? Now think about this for a second. Many of us, we start to study, for example, and, 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 uh, and I'm really, I told you before we started, I'm going to attack the Muslims. Right? So I'm attacking myself too. When you start to practice, for example, one of, the, one of the first hurdles you have to get over is you getting over yourself. Because what happens if you never notice? You start, you know, you, 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 I see this all the time. I was, another reason why I see this all the time because I was like this. I was, you know that, you know the crazy convert? You know the crazy convert that comes to the mosque and you're like, whoa, <laughs> whoa. Like I, saw, I saw this guy take shahada like two weeks ago and I, I, I don't even know what I'm doing. I can't, like this guy's crazy. Like I saw him become a Muslim two weeks ago, two months ago, two years ago, and I, I don't recognize him at all. What happens is that for many people, when they come into Islam or they start to practice Islam, all they're doing is giving their nafs something new to do. Something new for the nafs. Something tasty, right? Like, oh, like, like someone offered me some crazy sandwich. You guys eat the weirdest food here. Um, it was like caramelized onion and goat cheese sandwich, and which probably sounds totally normal to you, but to me, that's like. <laughs> or you have this other thing, uh, eggs and cress. Like, what, what is a what is, what is a cress, man? <laughs> I had to ask someone, is it halal? Like, <laughs> <laughs> is it like madbuh? Like when you slaughter it, or eggs and crust? Or you eat like, oh, eggs and mayonnaise? Come on, man, that's crazy talk. <laughs> no, but anyway, so I, I went for the um, caramelized onion and goat cheese one. I, I, I said, hey, that's the most bizarre thing I ever heard. So I, I, I actually liked it. It was great. But I liked it more because it was new, something new. So the nafs, the ego, likes new things. So the person who comes in, and, the, and this other people's nafs likes, likes the new Muslim. <laughs> and they start feeding them with all types of stuff. Do this, do that, do this, don't do that, do this, don't do that, don't do this, don't do that. Do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. Don't do that, don't do that, don't do that, wait. Do this. <laughs> and that poor, that poor, the poor woman and the poor guy, they come in and they're just like, <laughs> Right. But they're so, they're, but they're, I mean, of course God isn't entirely involved, but this is a new world. It's a new world, and it's a new world that, they're, that they, they're, they're coming into. And unless they've had like a sort of uh, devotionary past, you know, like I know a guy who was a Buddhist before he became Muslim. I don't, I don't think this guy ever went through this stage. I don't think so. Because he was, like this guy, he traveled all the way, he went to Tibet, either he went to India, where the Tibetans kind of moved to, or he went to Tibet. I, he probably went to India, I didn't ask him. And he was there, like meditating, doing the whole thing. So when he became a Muslim, he was already kind of, he knew the, pit, the, the pitfalls of the self a lot. He studied many of these things. But a lot of people, they come into religion, they get involved, and what happens? They start to depend and look at their actions. And how do you know they're depending on looking at their actions? Because they're going to tell you about yours. Isn't it true? MashaAllah, brother, MashaAllah. MashaAllah. No, my name's not David anymore. It's Dawood. Thank you very much. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry, Dawood. 
Yeah, it's no problem. What's up with your pants, man? What do you my, oh, I mean, yeah, lift them up. Let's go. Because if, because if you don't, if you don't, if you don't, right, there's, there's an, an obsession with acts, an obsession with activities. If you don't, if you don't, it doesn't mean, is it true or is it not true? You know, and everyone knows what I'm talking about. Is it true? It's besides the point. The point is, look what's happening. There is a person is supposed to be in a state of devotion, but they're in a state of devotion that is based in what? They're devoted to, act, to acts, to activities. They're devoted to activities. Now, the best thing that could probably happen for one of these kinds of people, and it happens to a lot of these kinds of people, that are, it's a stage, it's a beautiful stage, it's a blessed stage. But what happens usually is something comes along that knocks them down. They have a slip when it comes to their actions. One of the best things that could ever happen. Why? Because in that moment, they have severe spiritual depression. They fall. But why do they fall? Why do they fall? Hmm? What was the trigger? What did you say before? What did you say before? You said about this wisdom. I said, why do we lose, why do we lose hope? What did you say? We lose belief that we could do it ourselves independently. Or, to put it in another way, we're faced with the reality that I cannot control. I cannot control what happens to me in this, in this sense, in this, in, this, in, in this capacity. Because if it was up to me, if it was up to me, I wouldn't have any slips. But there's another step, there's another step in that. And that is, and this is the question I asked from the beginning, where is God in this? Min alarat, from the signs. Al timad, al amani, from the signs of depending upon creation or depending upon activities. Nuqsan al raja'i inda wujud al that you get depressed and you lose hope when you make a slip. What, what do you do? What do I depend on? What am I? What am I to depend on? Let's let's let's, let's go through some experiments. This cup of water that I have here, does, does, uh, and this, again, this is a philo-theological question. Most of you will probably be with me on it. This cup of water that I have, does this cup of water have the capacity to quench my thirst? Or does it receive, or, or, or is the capacity given to it? Does water, in and of itself, have the capacity to quench thirst? Or is it given that capacity? Okay, so as a Muslim, generally we're going to say that it's given the capacity. And the reason why we say that it's given the capacity is because there are times when water will not do what it's, what it's supposed to do. And we can use biblical examples if you want, or Quranic examples if you want. And so for example, when Abraham was thrown into the fire, if the fire had, had, had its own essential intrinsic capacity to burn, it would not have been able to become cold. But heat and fire and these kinds of capacities is something that's given to the fire, and God tells it to be cold, God tells it to be hot. So is that true because is that limited to fire, or is that in every, in every element? Well, to be consistent, it's in every element. So this means that when I want to reach for this cup of water, and I want to have my, my which is generally what I would do, if I start eating rocks because I'm thirsty, then there's probably something wrong with my mind. But generally speaking, this is where I go because I've seen the pattern. And then I drink this and it quenches my thirst. But I know, as someone who knows the nature of these kinds of things, I know that it's not essential to it. But that's where I'm going to go. This means, on a metaphorical, let me finish, please. This means on a metaphorical, on a metaphorical level, that when I'm reaching for the water, I'm not reaching for the water, I'm reaching for God. This is true for every activity that I have. Everything that I do, I'm calling out to Him. Every movement is a call towards God. That being the name, if that is the case, if that be the case, then it doesn't make any sense for me to depend on any created thing. The etimad should not be on the things, because these things themselves are depending on God. 
Water is depending upon God to be able to be water. The rocks are depending upon God in order to be rocks. The qualities are coming from not from, they're not essential, but they're coming to. So, if that be the case, from the signs of my depending upon the wrong thing, the, 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 from the signs of my depending, in other words, the, 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 the signs of my devotional life being a failure. I said before, what is religion? And I'm using the most vastest description that I possibly can. It's a life of devotion to something. The sign that my life of devotion is, devo is dedicated to the wrong thing is that I'm giving my devotion and my, and my time and my energy and my, my wealth and myself to a goal or to a means to an end, which it itself is dependent. And the sign of me doing the wrong thing, the sign, in other words, the sign of me not reaching my goal, which is God, the sign of me not reaching my goal, goal, goal the sign of me not reaching my goal, love, go love, the sign of the, my not reaching my goal is that, I, is that I'm constantly losing hope. I'm constantly losing hope. That's the sign that I'm not reaching my goal, that I'm constantly, constantly losing hope. Because when your hope is in the one who causes all things to reach their goals, you don't lose hope in him. Because he's not depending on someone else to make it happen. So for example, like, if I, what's your name? That's me. Hey, that's me. Okay, that's me. Listen, um, you know I'm staying in London, right? Okay, I'm going to need about, I like the first class situation on the train, but I do. I'm going to need about 160 pounds. Cool? All right. So, come tomorrow morning, where am I going to go? Who, 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 who am I going to see first? That's me. So, <laughs> so, tomorrow morning, here I come. Somebody! <laughs> yeah! But what are you gonna, and he says to me, oh, well, I was just kidding. I was just kidding. Right. And you're saying, no, no, I'm sorry, I can't do it. And you offer me an excuse, and you say, oh, no, what happened is, what happened is, all right, I'm going to tell you what happened, okay? All right, I'm going to tell you. Okay, I'm going to tell you, all right? <laughs> all right, all right, I'm, 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 I'm going to tell you. He, he has no reason. Right? Let me just make something up. Oh, man, what happened is, no, he's a good guy. He wouldn't do it. No, you say, no, oh, I wanted to, but what happened is, you know, um, someone else, someone else, I got robbed last night. He's a big guy, so it's like 15 guys. <laughs> He's like, yeah, man, I did, I, did, I did my best. I know I'm really tall, 15. If it, if it had been 14, it would have been 14. <laughs> it's 15, they were all, they were growling, it was crazy. So, what would I do? What would I, could, what would I do? I, all I can say is, okay. But then I realized that he's not the one. You know, he's not the one to depend on. When it comes to the, the mover, the, when it comes to the mover of all things, when it, one, when it comes to the one who changed time or makes time, when it comes to the, that entity which we described in the beginning, and this is just at a conceptual level. You don't have to believe it or believe it, but it follows. It makes sense. It is true in this sense as much as we can say that when it comes to God, that would never happen because no one can ever get in the middle of it. He will either decide to give you or decide not to give you. And if he decides not to give you, then who are you going to complain to? There's no like, there's no like lower God. <laughs> hey man, yo, you know the big God, he's tripping. Yeah, he's tripping, man. You should do something about it. We know one of the arguments of why there can't be more than one God. Because if there were more than one God, they would be constantly arguing with each other, nothing would happen. Because they're going to constantly assert their power. You know? This is very Nietzschean. It's a very Nietzschean thing to say because it's about the rules of power and you know they're going to be fighting. So how much time are we? Ten minutes? Okay. I've spent ten minutes, I mean I've spent way more than ten minutes uh, sort of taking you through whatever I just did to you. Um, and I would, if I have more time, I'd do more things to you but I think this will suffice for now. Um, is there a difference between God and Allah? Yeah, the difference is in this. Because if you want to call God, God, fine. Whatever, then it doesn't matter. I call, I say God all the time. Matter of fact, I, I, I'm a bit more comfortable with God because I was raised in speaking English. No problem. The difference between God and Allah is this. The difference between God and Allah is this. 
as long as you know, right? As long as you know what it is you depend on, and that it's a, it's a dependency, it's a dependency that has no, there's no alternative. And if that's what you mean when you say God, there's no difference. But when you say God, and you mean otherwise, then it's Allah. If you say Allah, and you think of other gods, then you should say God, in the way that we're saying it. You see where I'm going with this? It doesn't really, the semantics don't matter. It's, it's do we understand what we're looking at when we say the, when we say the Supreme Being? But even that, we kind of have to do. So, I want to ask you if there are anything, now, now the floor is open. I know I cut you like four times. I'm speaking too much. <laughs> Thinking too much, I don't even know if that's possible. Just, you just think whether it's too much or not. Quick question. Um, when you talk about the, uh, like, the state of water, you know, the, the, uh, yeah. it's, it's uh, at least our uh, will of God, what Allah creates, if you like. Yeah. Something like that. Um, that's an Ali, Ga Ali Ghazali type position. So, yeah. Um, um, they call them. Uh, he wrote the. Uh, yeah, I think about the, 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 the philosopher's ignorance. Yeah, the adherence of the philosopher. Yeah, but this is called. Um, man, you may forget the term. Um, so, could you could you actually fill me in who was wrote the incoherence to incoherence? Yeah, that's Ibn Rushd. Yes, Ibn Rushd. Yeah. What I described to you is called occasionalism, right? The, the, the entity doesn't have any capacity of its own, but God causes the causes the effect to occur in that occasion. Not occasionally. Right. Occasionally. Right. Occasionally. Right. Occasionally. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. So what were you saying? So what I was, uh, was going to ask you is, would you be saying a fairly different amount, of, a different sort of stuff, or different expressing a rather different philosophy, if you were, <coughs> if you were, if if the incoherence of the incoherence and one only. Oh, so what you're saying is, yeah, yeah, what that. you're saying is, would you be saying something different if you were a follower of the Middle Right? Yeah. I mean, you would be, you be, you be saying the same thing, but you would have to use a different argument. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, it's not going to lead to polytheism. Yeah. It's not going to lead to polytheism at the end of the day. But you would say you'd have a different argument. It's not going to lead to polytheism. Multiple, multiple Why do you say that? What, 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 what makes you say it wouldn't lead to Ibn Rushd himself, I'm saying Ibn Rushd himself yeah. was a believer. His argument for himself is not going to lead to polytheism. Because that's not what he was. What, what made you say polytheism? What's that got to do with it? <laughs> no, because ultimately, what, when you're, when it, Ghazali is explaining causality, or when Ibn Rushd is explaining causality, they're going to do it from the side from where people have to be in God. So they're not going to pick an argument that would talk about something else also. Yeah. Yes, please have. Can I have one? So you're talking about how um, people get caught up in the uh, notion of acting in the body, in a sense. So yeah. do you, doing this and not doing that. Yeah. Doesn't that itself kind of drive um, the expectation of your mind and your soul. So Say it one time. Because you, you were talking about how people get caught up with, um, with just doing actions, yeah. just action, 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 yeah. and they kind of miss the, miss the point. Yeah. But doesn't that itself drive the expectation, the expectation of your soul and your mind? Because there's no way you get to you get to that level without doing that that motion. Definitely. That's why I said to you that if I was to try to take a piece of chalk and throw it into that hole, yeah. that's a physical activity. But I have to know what I'm intending. Or I have to know what I'm intending. Right? Because the intention is coming from the heart. So, and, then, and the way that the, the relationship between the body and the heart it requires thought, the connection, that you act. So, yes, but at the same time, remember that he said this to him, actions are but by intention. In other words, they're judged by. They're judged by. And also the impetus. So what we see is going to be a physical activity. Yeah. Um, you know how people have like, um, okay, so people say to be like, to 
to be part of the religion, people sometimes say it's like, because uh, it's so good to do, it should make a personal background to religion. People sometimes have that kind of perception as to why people believe in God. So as you, um, being someone who was a Muslim and now you are Muslim, and I'm assuming you were a good person before. So like, <laughs> okay, this is- Now you're just not a good person now. <laughs> There's this kind of like, you know, you're good and then you you you're not you you become Muslim and now you're good. Before that you weren't good. You can you can kind of argue along those lines or argue against those lines. Here's what I would say. Uh, for me personally, because you're asking a kind of semi-personal question. For me personally, I felt like I was in the ultimate bad. And it wasn't because I I mean I wasn't I mean uh, um you know like I became Muslim when I was 20. Um, I had uh, been around, let's just leave it at that. You know, I had been around. And um, I wasn't the worst person on the planet. I wasn't, you know, but, you know, I wasn't doing the worst things, and I wasn't doing the best things. But in my mind, I wasn't the worst. In my mind, I was worse than anyone. Why was that? Because I thought to myself, look, I don't know anyone else's situation here, but I know that God exists. This is how I felt. And I, the reason why I know that God exists is because I know that I exist. How can I exist and he doesn't exist? That doesn't make any sense to me, that's all. This is where I was coming from. And I said to myself, okay, I don't know about what, I don't know about what anyone else is doing or what anyone else intends, but I know that God sees me. And I know that he's always been my friend. There's never been a moment when he wasn't, there was never been a time when he wasn't there for me. There's been plenty of times when I wasn't there for him. In other words, there's plenty of times when I'm not thinking about him at all. And if he, if, he, if he had the same relationship with me, I would vanish. So I thought to myself, like, you know, here you are, living the life that you live, enjoying the amenities that you have, like, you know, eyes and ears and all that good stuff. And you're just walking around. And you're not paying any real deference to the one who made you at all. You're ungrateful. And this is how I felt too, personally to myself. Whether that's true or not, it doesn't really matter. It's true to me. So I felt like you know you are you are ungrateful and you have no you have no consideration. How and you're talking about you know loving your friends and being good to people that are around you. Like, okay, so you can be good to your friends, you can be good to your mom, you can be good to your you know to your cat or whatever it is. But you can't be you but but, but you can you do the same to the one who made you? Does he not have rights over you or not? So I gave myself a really hard time. So I thought to myself, okay, all right. Something's wrong in here. Something's, something's, I have, there's like, the know, there's a movement happening inside that's making me feel like I need to do something. So what did I think about? I thought, I need to go with whatever it is that I know, right? So I said, okay, he exists because I, I exist, there. I exist, therefore he must exist. So I thought to myself, okay, cool. What you're gonna do is just like be a, be a good person, whatever that means, live a good life and have God in front of you and you'll be all right. So that's what I did at first. So I, I kind of, okay, basically what I did, I was at the same parties, but I was a lot nicer. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh no, please, let's not fight. <laughs> no, 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 please. You know, like, keep your lager in your hand. <laughs> it's fine, we don't need, no, don't throw, don't throw. <laughs> <laughs> No, I don't want your girlfriend. I, I, don't, I don't even know. I don't know her. <laughs> that's what that's what happened. You know, I was much nicer, but I wasn't doing anything differently. I was just nicer. So that went on for a little bit, and then I thought to myself, you know, my name's Lee, by the way. My mother, 
Actually, my first name I won't even tell you because you're, you're, you're going to make fun of me and I'm not going to have it. <laughs> so, so I said to myself, Lee, you know, let's get real, man. Here's what's going on. All you decided to do was to be a good person on your own terms. You're just being a good person on your own terms. Where, where is God in that? Where is he really? It's still your own terms. So I thought, okay, all right, okay, all right, all right, all right. And I said one, one evening, I said, God, if you, if you have a way, right, if you have some kind of way that is, your, that is your way, and you make it clear to me, to me, then I will make it my life. Now, I was like, look, if it's Hinduism, let it be Hinduism. If it's, I don't know, you know the Hare Krishnas? You know Hare Krishnas? Yeah, like the, the, I mean, I was like, look, I, I, I don't know how I felt about like, kind of like dancing and like, cutting all my hair. And, I, I don't know, but I figured, hey, if that's where it's supposed to be, then that's where I'm going to go. But what I, what I, all I knew was that there was one God. So I'm checking out different religions, I'm checking out different things. And then for me, what happened is I, have, I had a dream, basically, that kind of pushed me over the edge. What was the dream? The dream was that I was making such a, you, know, you guys know such a prostration. In my dream, I prostrated. But I prostrated when I, because I knew it. I mean, I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. We have like, it's like the West African, like West African, like immigrant like, like, capital of the world. It's like, that's a plenty of like Muslims over there. So I, I, I prostrated. When I prostrated, what do you think I felt in my heart? Who said that? I'm saying. Hallelujah, you know that. Uh, I felt peace in my heart. And I realized, that what you're looking for, what, how do you know you've struck gold, is that that peace in your heart. It's a peace that is from before, before all time. So I, uh, I decided to become Muslim based upon that dream because I realized that that was what I, I knew this peace before. It wasn't some newfangled idea. It was something that I'd always known. And I was looking for it. That's why I was so upset because I, you can't be upset about something you never had. Peace. Where's the peace? And I found that in the is that a PIL shirt? Sorry, is, that, is that PIL? Yeah, yeah nice. Do you know that? Come on, man. I'm sorry. I may be wrong and I may be right. Yes. <laughs> okay. Sorry, don't worry about that. So, um, so I, um, I became a Muslim because of that peace that I found. Now, good person, bad person, before or after. I felt like I was the worst person on the planet before I became a Muslim, because I knew that I wasn't doing it for God. I knew, and I knew I had made him secondary. I knew that. Okay? I couldn't lie to myself. Am I a better person after? I don't know. At least I know, in my beliefs, at least I know a way, well, which is not in this anymore, but at least I know the way to be able to get to what I, what I feel is goodness, which is what? It's that you, be, you become a slave to God. In your mind, in your body, and your soul. This is what, why? Because it's, that's where the peace lies. How do you know you're on the good? Because you feel the peace. You don't feel disturbed. So, am I better now? I don't know. But I feel like I've found the better, the better way, the better way that fits me as a human being. That's a long answer. <laughs> I'm not going to argue with anybody about what they believe. I think it's off limits. But um, I would say that. And I'll give more peace. Because I realized that the thing that was bothering me the most, the thing that was bothering me the most wasn't that I didn't have rituals in my life. It wasn't that I didn't believe in some kind of supreme deity. It wasn't that. What was bothering me the most <coughs> what was bothering me the, me the most? Okay. I don't know how. I don't, I don't know what example to use except for one. I'm going to use romance as an example. Okay, so please bear with me. Here we go. All right. When you when you like when you love someone, when you love someone and you you connect with them in such a way that you love them. What is the proof that you love that person? What are some of the proofs? Yeah. What kind of actions? Okay. 
doing things that make them happy as opposed to things that they wouldn't be happy with. But does does that ever cost you anything? If you're willing to do it, it does cost you something. Then yeah. it's so it does cost you something at some time. Yeah. So now we can say that love is costly. When you really, really love someone and you're tested in that love, what is the thing that you have to what 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 is that thing you have to pay ultimately? What do you have to give ultimately? You have to put them before you. See, I'm, I'm only gonna listen to the older people here right now. <laughs> so I'm like, no, because what happens is, you know, you just write poetry. <laughs> I mean, you say good stuff. And you hear good stuff. You're like, yeah, that's right, that's right. You're like, we'll see what happens with that later. <laughs> I, I could interject and say, like, this is sort of a humanist position, is that you might, yeah. that is, that you might be capable, you might, you might find that you wish, or the ideal would be, you could love all of humankind rather yeah. than. Rather than you can reason with it all you want, but I would say, before you do that, is there anything reasonable about love? Is there anything reasonable about love? Love is ridiculously irrational. Why in the world do you incline towards, forgive my language, but why in the world do you incline towards this lump of flesh versus that lump of flesh? God, why? You know, like, I love you. <laughs> why you love me then? Why you love me? <laughs> oh, stop playing, stop playing. <laughs> Like what? She wants to know. She wants to know. Look, we're all like, we're all just lumps of flesh, right? Isn't that what it is? So why you love me and not her? <laughs> oh, stop playing. You're crazy. <laughs> no, but there's something. It's, it's, but there's something. There's something. It, it, whatever that is, is completely irrational. But what it what it what it is is that inclination, the inclination that you have. If you really, really love, especially um, maybe one of the highest levels of love that we can you know, kind of look at in this in our, in our existence now is the, the love that a mother has for the child, I think. And why is that? That mother has already given her body, right? Body, mind, and soul. She already, the body, already been given. The mind, always thinking about the baby. Always thinking about the baby. Like I go shopping with my, I go shopping with my wife, my kids are like heading towards like adulthood now. I, it never fails. We're shopping. Oh, even you would love this, <laughs> right? Sophia would love this, this is great. Oh, I'm, you know, what do you think? And I'm thinking, I, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, I have to pretend like I wasn't the same. Oh, yeah. <laughs> my mind is right there with you. I'm spending my mind on this. <laughs> but even it comes down to the soul, right? The, the very soul of a woman when it comes to her child is like, you want to see a woman, woman become something interesting? Mess with her kids. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing what a woman can do, the variety. But she can become a serious man. <laughs> okay, but anyway, love, what love does is love, it, love removes yourself. Love removes you. Uh, the expenditure. No, no problem. Have a good evening. So love, love, re, love by definition, it erases you. Now, going back to what you asked. People of other faiths, they experience peace, um, how, um, and how would you? How can you make any? If that's the different differentiation, then how can you sort of make a difference with any kind of religion whatsoever? I would say that for me, again, this is a very subjective response. For me, when it comes to God, I I understand it in that in that way. That the reason why I submit to God as a Muslim in this religion of unity where he has no partners, because I think that's the, I, mean, I know that's the right of love. The right of love is that, it, that, the right of love for God is that it not be shared with anything else. And, that, and the reason why that is, because he is, he is not shared with anything else. In other words, this is gonna sound really sacrilegious, um, but it's like, on a worldly level, if I really, really, really love this woman, like love this woman, nothing else would come into my mind. Because that's the nature that that's the nature that love. That's what love does to you. When it comes to God, He's the creator of that woman. So how much more than how much more than does He deserve my absolute and complete and total submission? So for me, when someone says that they find peace in uh, in other faiths, I, I don't I don't reject it. I don't and I don't I just leave it for them because I think to myself, 
The reason why I cannot go that way is because I feel like it's infidelity. I feel like it's infidelity. I can't worship God and he be, you know, uh, not to, I don't want to mention any specific religions because it's not. But for me personally, I feel like it's being, it's infidelity to the one who made me. I can, I can only, I, can only, I only found fidelity when it came to Islam. And I think, I, and I feel like that peace of my heart came because I was being, I was, I was showing fidelity. That's my personal response. You guys are asking me a lot of, and you're like, how do you, how do you, is there uh, any other sort of things? We try to be as consistent as possible during our presentation, but if you notice anything that wasn't consistent or didn't seem to make sense or didn't follow through, you can say something also because I'm, I'm also just like you, figuring it out. And I want to say I think that was such a wonderful talk. Oh, thank you. And if only five minutes of it was very funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and very inspiring. And Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much. Um,